You guessed it, another gimbal. And this time, even smaller than DJI has made them before. But as you guys know on this channel, when it comes to me and my gimbals, I like them small because it's not the size that matters, it's what you can do with it. We're gonna be testing out the DJI Ronin RS3 Mini today, and I am very excited to see what this thing is capable of because as advertised, it can withstand the weight of an A7S III with a 24 to 70 G Master on it, and it is. <laughs> So this is the RS3 Mini. I'm not gonna lie to you, when I initially saw the size of this, I was skeptical, especially when they said it could withhold the weight of an A7S III with a 24 to 70 G Master. You know what? It's obviously doing it, and after shooting with it today, I can say with full confidence that this can handle it. It did, and it was honestly like a champion, in my opinion. First thing to notice about this, and obviously the biggest selling feature about it, is the size. It is very small <laughs> and it can fit in a backpack, can easily fit in a suitcase. It looks quite discreet. I can easily hold it with one arm for a long time. I am not fatigued after shooting with it for two hours. We were shooting with it for two hours, like I said, and it still has 85% battery. So the battery life is actually quite good. I would have to use it all day to really know like how far this would get me in a full day shoot. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a removable battery, but you know, that's kind of the price you pay for the form factor. So what we're filming today is a little scene with Kubla. He's gonna walk over to the table, open up his guitar, take out the guitar, go over to the couch, sit down and start playing. So we're gonna shoot this from three different angles and actually two or three different focal lengths. We'll see. The first angle, we're actually going to follow Kubla walking up over to the table. And as he sets the guitar case down, I rotate around him this way, kind of the way Josh is right now. He's gonna open up the case, take out the guitar, walk over. I follow him kind of from the side and this is a wide angle. I spin around behind him. Kubla comes over here and sits down. Meanwhile, I'm rotating over here and disappear into the couch. So that we're gonna shoot entirely wide. And then ideally with coverage from all of these three different angles and shooting the entire scene through, we should have enough footage to be able to cut together a sequence given that the continuity will be on point. The other two angles, the next one we're gonna follow the guitar. So I'm gonna come out from behind this pillar, the nice low angle following Kubla, holding the guitar case. He'll swing it up, set it on the table. Again, I rotate behind the guitar case and kind of disappear behind one of the curves of it, follow over the curve of the guitar case as he picks up the guitar, and I stay on the guitar the entire time. And actually, by the time Kubla sits down on the couch, I have the opportunity to kind of do some push-ins on him playing guitar and roam around a little bit and have some fun. And then the last take will be essentially the same thing, but we'll have a tight, a fairly tight medium close up on Kubla's face. And same thing, I'll be able to get a little bit of coverage of him just playing guitar. I might actually like rotate in front of this soft plant <laughs> just to give us some depth. And then we'll close out the scene with a ever so smooth in sling mode. It would be a dolly out, but there's no dolly. Just pull out all along the floor all the way back and then we'll fade to black and that's our little scene. The great thing about shooting one sequence all the way through is that the continuity is done and when you're shooting a scene all the way through with a single camera, you've got that entire length of time to pick and choose from three different angles. So because it's such a short sequence, we can 100% do it this way. The other thing that's really great about this and that DJI definitely considered when offering a gimbal like this is that you can switch this to shoot vertical within a couple of seconds just by moving the plate over and I'll show you how to do that in a second. And that's because what they're allowing you to do now is you don't have to shoot with a phone gimbal in order to have something lightweight and run and gun and something that you can take on trips, for example. You can have something that's just as small and allow yourself to get high quality 
quality video now rather than sacrificing that quality with a phone. After shooting with this today, this is 100% something I would travel with because it's always one of those things where you're like, do I bring a gimbal? It's gonna take up so much room. It's a whole thing to bring. You know, this is something that you don't have to think too much about just having the option to shoot with a gimbal now when you're traveling. You can say, hey, yeah, why wouldn't I just throw in the RS3 Mini and then I have that option to shoot with a gimbal and get some really smooth footage if I want to. So something to keep in mind when shooting any kind of sequence, and this applies to whether your camera is on sticks or not, but it's just really easy to break this rule with a gimbal, is you wanna pay attention to the 180 rule. So that means you want to be facing your subject within a 180 degree area. So you don't wanna cross that 180 degree axis because that is going to confuse your audience and they won't have a good sense of spatial awareness as to what's happening in the scene. Occasionally there are times that this is broken in filmmaking, but that's not what we're gonna focus on right now. This is what's gonna help create continuity and help your audience have a sense of where the subject is in the space that they're in. When shooting with a gimbal, because you have that opportunity to move around so much, we were very cautious of shooting from the same angle and following Kubla from the same angle and not necessarily coming behind him and shooting this way unless it was a smooth, fluid shot. I hope you're following me. In full transparency, I set this up for the first time last night and I had to update the firmware. It's always something I'm really not looking forward to doing because I never know how annoying it's going to be. And this was super intuitive to set up. I think I had the firmware updated and it was ready to go within like a few minutes. I think maybe five minutes max. It was not a big deal at all. The menu system is really easy to use. Connecting it to the app and you can control everything through the app is really easy to use. It charges through a USB-C port over here and you can actually connect this to your camera right here if you want to be able to control focus which you would obviously do with this little spinny wheelie here and you can also connect it to your camera via bluetooth if you want to stop and start recording right on the handle down here now for someone that's my size i find the grip really nice especially once you add on the feet at the bottom you can two hand it go down to sling mode i think it's great i do enjoy just keeping the feet on it at all times for extra stability and i can set it down whenever i want and this adds like no weight to it to be honest something else you really want to make sure that you you're getting is obviously enough coverage. So even though you feel like you nailed that first shot, because when you're using something like the gimbal we're using today, you are monitoring the camera yourself. You have no second pair of eyes. So using playback to see exactly which parts of that sequence are good and are usable, and then just always shooting a safety to make sure you have more than enough in post because you really want to avoid reshoots as much as possible. Even if you have the opportunity to playback on a larger screen, that would would be ideal as well and whether you can cast a feed and have if you have someone else on set to be able to view it or just budget the extra time in your shoot to be able to watch those takes back you want to make sure that you have enough to work with later and when you're shooting like a fluid motion like this that even though I may have missed focused in one part I know that in the other take I just shot I have that clip perfectly in focus and I can use that in the final cut. Where does this sit compared to the RS3 and the RS3 Pro? Well, for starters, this is half the weight of the RS3 Pro. So really it comes down to the size and how much weight this can actually handle well. And that's gonna depend on what you're normally shooting at the end of the day. So whether this is the right choice for you or not, I would really have to load this up and see how much it could really handle. But like I said, with this on it, and I'm confident based on how it performed today that you could put a mic on top, it would be just fine. Would this be the only gimbal I keep in my arsenal? Probably not, but I could see myself using this a lot and then only reaching for that, let's just say, make a blanket statement and say that larger gimbal for situations where I really need to load it up with a larger lens and a larger camera body and or in situations where I need to be able to swap out the battery. I really think that's it because I travel so much, I could see myself using this a lot and just to have that option on set that I want a few smooth shots, having this just in my kit all the time would be so handy.
Lizzie, what are we doing? We're, ca we're calibrating. No. Done. <laughs> Thank you for watching today's video. If you liked it, please give it a like down below. Subscribe if you're not already and hit the notification bell to get notified for all future videos. Please go check out Kubla's music as well. He's a very talented musician and he always helps us out and is our model for these <laughs> videos. If you have any other questions about this gimbal or any other gimbals, please drop it low in the comments and I will take a look-see and maybe we'll talk about it in a future video. Bye. <laughs>